Hey everybody and welcome to the Big Bass Podcast, the fishing show where size absolutely matters. My name is Ken Duke. And I'm Terry Battisti. Our producer and engineer is none other than the great Nathan Benson. Uh, today we've got a, a show for you uh, that's, uh, we're bringing back, you know, one of our star performers, uh, a big bait guy, big bait original guy uh, from, the, from the 90s. Uh, we had him on a little while ago talking about, you know, some of the baits that he had developed over the years. But today, Ken, what we're going to talk about is rats. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Nobody has a bigger reputation for building rat style baits than our guest today. Uh, he makes the best stuff, quite frankly. There are a lot of rats in the market mm -hmm. now, and, and just about all of them owe a great deal to Jerry Rago. And, and we've got to pick Jerry's brain tonight, today, whatever, whatever you're watching, whenever you're listening. Uh, and, and we're going to get to the bottom of rat fishing because, honestly, I think it's an underappreciated big bass technique. I think there are anglers all around the country who would benefit from getting more serious and dialed in on their rat fishing. And I think that uh, to, a, to a significant degree, you don't have a lot of pressure when you're rat fishing because a lot of bass haven't seen these baits. Would you agree with that? No, oh, absolutely. I mean, it, yeah, there have been wake baits around for a long time, but nothing uh, that pushes the water like a big rat on the surface. And, you know, to look at them and, and say, well, some of these things are just too big. Well, it just goes back to the swim bait deal. They're not too big. They're um, not. Yeah, it, and, and they cause a big commotion on the top of the water. Uh, they make a ton of noise. Uh, and, and Jerry, honestly, is... In my opinion, the guy that 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 started it with the Rago Rat in you know early 2000. None so. better, none better. And folks, honestly, yep. I hate to say this because we know a lot of bait makers who make a lot of fine products. But if you're not fishing uh, one of Jerry Rago's rats, you're maybe not fishing the very best. You're certainly fishing something that's derivative. So let's bring him on, ladies and gentlemen, from Bishop, California, Jerry Rago. Jerry. Okay. So, <laughs> welcome back here, to the Big Bass Podcast. Thanks. I'm, it's, uh, it was pretty fun last time. Hopefully, we can uh, keep everybody interested. Well, oh, yeah. well you're, as we knew you would be, Jerry, you were extremely popular on, on your when your last appearance. Everybody wanted you to come back. Everybody, uh, and I was especially interested because we didn't get to it last time. We really didn't get to the rats, and I think that's a big part of your reputation as a bait maker is, is the rat. And, and I want you to go back. You told the story a little bit. I don't know if it was on our show or when we were off the air just chatting, but uh, you told the story about when you realized that a rat might be a terrific big bass bait. I think you were driving. <laughs> Can you tell us that story again? <laughs> so I didn't close the deal on the last one, but basically I used to do a lot of varmint hunting at night. And at a certain time, uh, Certain time of the year when I start seeing the rats at night, it's time to quit. And I thought, and this night I saw a bunch, and I thought, okay, I'm gonna maybe I should make a rattler. The next day I'm driving home from work, and uh, it was really really windy and it's getting dark, and a rat runs across the road like a kangaroo rat. I live in the mountains, and the wind was blowing so hard it picked it up and blew it through the through the sky across the four lane highway. <laughs> I just went, wow. And I went, oh, yeah, I'm going to make a rat today. So I stopped at Kmart and bought the uh, the cream worms that look like a nightcrawler. But to me, they look like a rat tail. There the you old, go. Uh, right yeah, there. The old cream scoundrel. Right, right. And uh, so I just bought a four pack. And I went home and I carved this rat. I've been tinkering with lures quite a bit. And uh, so I, I carved this rat and put a joint in it. And then I thought... Not the kind of smoke, though. But uh, anyways, I <laughs> told my, uh, my stepson at the time, hey, we're, let's go down and try this. And, the, and the, the pond I was going to is pretty beat up. It was a local pond. And I just wanted to see if it was going to swim right. And he says, uh, so the first cast, I'm cranking it in, and it was exceeding my expectations for swimming on this. But I couldn't see the wiggle. I could just see the wake. And he just screams out, look out! And a five-pounder just... Pummels me. First and, uh, cast, like, first, first cast, cast first ever. fish, and it's I'm, a five I'm pounder. In, in Bishop, California. Now, 
Right, right. And it's a, this is a, a trophy trout area, or it used to be. And there is bass here, but there are certain barriers that can't get by. And, of course, they can't live at certain elevations. Or whatever. But, but basically, and then I, I called a friend that uh, Terry happened to have met, met before, Will Steele. And uh, I said, hey, man, you got to see this rat swim. And we went to this other pond. Same thing. He just You could see the bass come out of the toolies. And it was a long cast. And it just creamed it. And I think I might have mentioned last time, but we went around for about three weeks and just gutted every bass hole we knew up here at the high elevation. You know, just I mean, just, yep. just KO'd it. And, uh, but, I, but I kept it a secret for a long time. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I wanted to keep catching the fish. You know, just, yep. uh, you know, I wanted the fish more than, you know, I wasn't ready to sell baits yet. And uh, even after I started selling baits, I didn't. I still hung on to the rat for quite a while. And uh, Terry well, has a little bit of. He knows a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. So, first time I meet Jerry, it's the winter of 2000, 2001, and I'm fishing with Scott, the guy that makes the triple trout, who's my been my best friend since childhood. And so Scott and I are on Paris, and Paris, and and Jerry's with with Will, and. We meet out in the middle of the lake or up near the dam face or something like that. And uh, Scott goes, hey, Jerry, show, show Terry the rat. And I was getting ready to go fish the Delta uh, uh, Divisional up at, uh, for, for the Bassmaster. And uh, so Jerry throws this rat into Scott's boat. And I'm looking at it. And holy mackerel. I mean, it's just, wow. This has got California Delta and wake bait written all over and uh so i give it back to jerry and you know a couple of months you know go by and the next thing i know i've got three of them show up in the mail at the house right in time to go up to the delta and holy mackerel that thing changed my life it was <laughs> just amazing if the fish didn't eat it it showed me where they were uh i let andy kuchia borrow one andy used to be a a huge guide out on the Delta, a uh, great guy, a good friend of mine. And uh, I let him borrow one, and he said that he had a, like a 14 come up and swirl on the thing right, you know, 10 feet from the boat. Um, he he wasn't going to give it back to me. I had to fight him for the damn thing. <laughs> Jerry, what year was that when you built that first rat? Paul, Paul. Well, I, Harry's was later, but I would say about, uh, probably about 92. I mean, it was when Castaic was just, all those big bass were starting to slow down around 92, and I, I was worried that I missed it um, because um, it was basically because the stripers got in there and ate all the food, I guess, is what a lot of people say. But, but yep. the bass can't compete with the stripers, you know, and especially for the size that they were. But I kept it, a, still kept it a secret. I went to a, an injection molding place, and it was too much money, uh, too much work left over. They would make, they could make the bodies. I still had to cut them, still had to paint them. You know, it was it was about fifteen thousand for a mold back then. And uh, nowadays, if you go to China, it's about a thousand, depending on what you have, up to twenty five hundred. It goes by how many joints or whatever. But uh, it just uh, you pay them in joints felt, or. Well, it's every joint is different. Well, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, folks. California guys, you know what you know what I deal with here. California yeah, guys. You, it's a good thing I can catch a couple of fish because I'm about the most boring guy there is. I don't drink, smoke, no, no. I never did anything. I never needed to, but I was into fishing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, I think I'm doing pretty good at my age and i think it's because i never did anything like that uh, yep my, my well, high was was fishing so was, and building some of the finest big bass baits ever made by anybody anywhere anytime uh, now i know through the years you've made a lot of different models of, of rats how many total different models have you made and put on the market well, not all of them made the market, but I've made at least right. 17 different ones. 
Gotcha. Um, different, I should say different bodies, and then some of the some of the bodies will get four different lips. So you know, it, it kind of goes on and on. But it's every time that I find a little edge or something that the bass are doing. And, and we started to talk a little bit the last time, but basically, let's just say uh, I'm gonna start out with a with a one piece rat. So sometimes one might, I would call it an X pattern, right? Swimming like this, and then the tail swimming. The so one's an X, one of them the head just a little bit and the tail farther. You know what I mean? And then another one where the head was farther than the tail. You're talking about the I center swim, of gravity. Yeah, for, yeah. The, folks, the, for the, the pivot po point. Right. So yes. that's three, three different pivot points, let's say, on, on a one-piece rack, let's say. And then now you're going to add in five or six different lips, round bill, square bill, deep diver, you know, circuit board, whatever. You know, just kind of a – I'd change it up, and it it seemed like I would catch a whole bunch of fish for a while until, you know, I'd change to something else. And I'd like to say the – like the circuit board one was one, one of the – toughest ones you know it took me a while when i worked with livingston you know i found that you know if i'm fishing shallow water and you can get away with the bottom obviously the same thing as a crankbait bottom contact you can pause or not pause i liked when i, I liked what i liked about the circuit board lip on any hard bait and especially the rats is it seemed to me that the circuit boards would uh dig a hole and move on where other other let's say a square bill or a round bill would deflect off a rock or, or a stick or whatever, you know, and some people like to pause. I, I like the, the digging and moving on, I meaning it would dig a hole and move. And then, you know, obviously there's a little dust cloud. And you know, if you're hitting rocks or uh, sand, you know, there's difference there. You know, one thing I found out uh, when I worked with Livingston and met with the pros, you know, we had to meet at a pool all the time. I, I wanted to meet at a lake, but you always couldn't. You go to a pool, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but a crankbait, when it touches the bottom of the pool, it's over. They they don't swim anymore. They just stop. They, I guess because the pool lining is too soft, too smooth. You know, there yeah. is no rocks or trip sticks or bushes in the pool. But yeah. that's not always yeah. the best place to test. You know, you can test the swimming, but not the, you know, if you're trying to test the deflection. I remember right. reading an article about, I think it was Kevin Short, blonde haired guy he had yeah, pink yeah. Boat. Yep. if a bait didn't spin around when he hit the bush it wasn't worth anything you know and so i'm not i'm not the only lure maker I, I read all the articles too and try to see what everybody wanted you know, just uh, but the rat i think we talked about a little bit not wasn't exactly there's a lot of non-believers um let's just say for the pros and then when one guy does use it all of a sudden, he's the genius. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? I remember one at Texas about three, four years ago in a, at Fork. And uh, there's a guy from California fishing there. I know you know him, Terry. I can't remember, I think of his name right at the back. It's not but, Zal Dane, uh, is it? No, it wasn't Zal Dane, but it was... Uh, oh, Niggermeyer? No. James... Um, he's from the... He's from Arizona. I just oh, Brett Height. Um, yeah, you're, uh, you're getting close. John Murray. Josh. Josh. Uh, Bertrand. Bertrand. No, it's uh, yeah, he was a Labina guy on their pro staff too. But uh, oh, um, we'll think of it. But yeah, yeah. I, I know that one time I believe he was fishing. And he, so he was fishing someone else's rat, and it really irritated me because it's it was exactly like this is my alpha rat. So it has mm -hmm. a square bill, a longer body than what you have. Different, obviously, the tail. This one hasn't been shipped yet, but uh, <laughs> but this this different joint. See, there's the. Oh yeah, look at that. Longer. It has more swing to it than than the rat yeah. that you have, Terry. And yeah. um, but uh. So it, it, that rat was identical, so you know, it irritated me, and I was praying that he didn't win. You know what I mean? Clifford Clifford Perch. No, Clifford Perch is okay. It's, yeah, he's a real nice guy. But anyway, he uh, 
that so the fact that he was almost going to win and they just kept going back to the rat showing it swimming and then uh Hank Cherry came from behind and won that one. It was a classic. I, I think. Oh, a classic. Huh. Now maybe classic on maybe Conroe. Classic, but Hank Cherry ended up winning. So and, and I knew Hank Cherry pretty well. And uh so Yeah, the the classic on Conroe uh was that well if it that was, was a, won by Lee, that, right? Yeah, you're talking about the classic that was on uh, Possum, Ray Roberts. Ray, no, or, was it Ray Roberts or was it Possum Kingdom or which one? I think it was Ray Roberts. I think it was Ray Roberts. Roberts. Yeah, Ray yeah, Roberts yeah. is right. I will have that name for you guys momentarily. Don't you worry your pretty little heads. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, it's hard to remember all of them, but you're you're one of those Bassmaster guys. So. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you know, so that's happened. And then there was one, the College World Series. I think it was the same rat. And it, but it wasn't mine. And uh, they had it on the cover of Fast Times. And uh, so that one, you know, I'd get all bowed up about it. You know, and, I, and like I said last time, the last show, you know, I can't believe these guys don't call. I mean, I got a different rat for every little thing. So you, and yeah. And they do do it. They do what they're supposed to do. And I mean, I've even got a, this one spits water. It's got a hollow face. I have a hole in it. Every once in a while, the water will spit out through the top of the head like a popper. But uh, cool. just, <laughs> it just, it just doesn't end. Uh, you know, I, I sent you guys a rat, but I didn't send them in time. I didn't read the email in time, but uh <laughs> So this is a one-piece rat, and it's kind of odd. There we go. Yeah, I and think I, it's odd. But I can tell you, well, I, I mailed you guys one. Oh, thank so, you, Jerry. Appreciate that. Yeah, I was hoping you had it before the show, but it's got this triangle lip. Let me see. There we go. So it's got a real swing like this. And then, you know, a lot of guys, well, one-piece rat, I don't you know, they don't think that they swim. Let me tell you, a one-piece rat out swims a two-piece rat any day of the week. Is that right? Because, because the body, the, it's more of an exaggerated motion, whereas, a, this, you know, this is more of a, a wiggling, as this one's kind of chucky. And right. it's just kind of, it, once again, it's a fisherman. It depends on what he's doing or if he's fishing where someone else is fishing and he wants to have an edge or whatever. But this one's coming out with the... Uh, uh, I do have a partnership with Swimbait Underground. This one's coming out pretty quick. We're just waiting for all the colors to come in. And this is an injected bait. What does and, that um, bait do? It, it's going to, instead of a wake, like, it twists and turns like this. Real exaggerated. And, of course, it's also wiggling at the same time. It's, it's about as extreme an action as you can get. And it wakes yeah. and it cranks down. It doesn't crank down yeah. deep. But... Go ahead. What's the retrieve speed? Justin Kerr. Just, Justin Curry, right? And yeah. um, so it's it's slow, but it it can you can burn it, and it just depends on what they want. But uh, you know, for me, it seems most rat bites are uh, the first two feet and the last two feet. You know, I mean, they they really? make up their mind right away. And, okay. Uh, you know, those the other thing uh, when I. Worked with Livingston. They they had a nice little jerk bait, but everybody wanted the, uh, you know, the Vision One Ten. So their pros didn't like the their bait because it only had two hooks. You know what I mean? Whereas the Vision One Ten style had three hooks, and then everybody copied it. Where, but basically, I don't think that you need all the hooks all the time. So a lot of times, I heard that they wouldn't fish the rat because it only had one hook. And uh, but in my experience. They come up and they pull them down every time. And uh, mm -hmm. you only need the one hook. So most of my rats only had one hook all the time, and I don't think you need another one. But, of course, when I made a bigger one, you know, you, oh, you needed yeah. two hooks for the fisherman. Well, this yeah, this yeah. bait's probably about five and a half inch body and, a, you know, about a six, seven inch tail. This one, again, this was a complete. Let me get back in there. There we go. This one's got a round bill, which has a little bit of a rolling action. But if yep. I put a square bill on it, it does that X action again, that, or the axis or whatever. So it just 
kind of what the fishermen want. And there's almost no wrong way to do it. Because if you if you watch a rat swim in the water, they swim pretty straight. And the tail just follows them. Yeah. You know, but their legs are kicking. So I've tried legs, paddles, whatever. Couldn't make them work enough to get to say that that would get me bit without mm-hmm. a lip on it. Let's say, you know, a lip to make it wake or swim. And uh, so to tell you the truth, most rat baits, including all of mine, don't swim the way a rat swims. It's it's more of an agitated, gurgling, you know, that's what seems to get bit the most. Uh, Jerry, uh, if you had to recommend to the, the folks listening and watching here your most versatile rat, a good starting point, for folks who maybe haven't fished a lot of rats, what would you recommend? Um, the original rat these days, I don't, I don't even haven't even made it for years. I probably made about 15,000 of them, but they're, wow. I wouldn't go with the one, the one Terry has, but, a, but an injected version in the end, it ended so up being a, a little bit subtle while it works. It still works. There's a lot of competition out there and a lot of rats. There's, at least a dozen that are exact copies of what Terry has in his hand. Oh, yeah. It's not hard yeah. to find somebody who's knocked you off. Yeah, and there's yeah. guys that, but you know, some people don't know they knocked you off. And other people think it's an honor to knock you off. And then there's other people <laughs> that are a crook, let's say. You know what I mean? It, yeah. You can't. You know, there's a lot of kids that they just want to catch one on a swim bait, and they're not, they're going to call a rat a swim bait. I don't call them a swim bait. I think they're a top water hard bait. You know, yep. where like I think the AC plug is the generic trout is a like they're hard baits to me. To me, a swim bait is a rubber bait, and, uh, and they can be an inch long or 11, 12 inches. You know, but oh, don't but, don't start this conversation with Batisti. <laughs> Batisti is the worst ever at defining <laughs> classifications of lures. He just well. doesn't get it. Jerry, he just doesn't get it. Don't don't waste okay. your time with him. Well, oh I'm warning you God. now. He doesn't think Jeez. it's a swim bait unless it's eight inches long. If it's seven and fifteen sixteenths, he it's says it's not a swim bait. Plug. It's not a swim oh bait. God. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he's all right. Um, so I've you had that last uh, two hooker up that you put up. Can you bring that okay. up? Yeah. Uh, for those of you listening and not watching, when Terry said hooker, he was not referring to a prostitute. <laughs> so, that thing looks like if you took the bill out of it, that it would make a good walking bait. It walks fantastic. <laughs> um, that's one reason that the head is tipped up. Yeah. And obviously, too, I'm underneath the nose. Yeah. The, the line tie is underneath, underneath the nose. Yeah, it's going to help awesome. it wake. And I've, I'm trying to remember, I believe my line tie is even further down on the walking version. I, I sell it at Tackle Warehouse, but not that many. And I'm, I'm surprised That's crazy. I don't more, but, but there is a following because it seems like the same numbers and colors or whatever. And there's another thing, colors. Um, in the last couple of years, I've got into bone where I've never really caught anything on, let's just say white. Not a big fan of white, but I'm starting to become one. Our water is pretty dirty this year. So that's one reason. But bone, bone before dark to me, you can't beat it anymore. And, uh, and then I have, you know, I have probably the most ordered color is black. Yeah. I, I don't use black ever. I just, I just don't like it. And one I, of the biggest selling nice. colors that one of the biggest selling colors that ever that Hedden ever made was black shore minnow, and it was black with you know. Uh, Right, uh, like a uh, skeleton T-shirt, you know, with right. black exactly. T-shirt and you exactly. got the bones. Thank you. Yeah, and yeah. um, but well, there's the theory of uh, black at night. Um, yep. Never, I never do it ever. But you know, and uh, <laughs> I think it's whatever you're fishing when you can fish. So, for instance, I have a. This is a color. Saw one on a, you know, on the dock at Casitas, a dead rat, and then a, a mm-hmm. dead mouse. And I saw another one floating inside a boat that was full of water. And um, so this was what I called the personal color. I think it looks like a house mouse, let's say. Even it's, though it's this a gray. is bigger than a mouse, but smaller than a rat. 
And yeah, this one's exactly. actually this is next year's rat, by the way. Oh, deep diver. Um, That's cool. <laughs> you know, but but this color, so I just start calling it the personal color. And it's uh, a ledge mouse, Jerry. That's the ledge mouse. We like that. We're not actually, naming it after you, Ken. <laughs> so and with that being said, they'd always say, Well, what's what's the why do you call it the personal color? You know, this is after a few years, and I go, because it's the one I never take off my mind. Ooh, I, there you go. And I, you know, I was trying to say, and it wasn't the best seller, but then it it jumped up to the best seller. And I'm basically saying, this is what I'm fishing with. Maybe you should, too. You know, and, <laughs> and once again, the rats, you know, there's different different uh, styles and actions, and uh, I can't stand the uh, chartreuse you know, tiger, fire tiger rats. It just insults me. You know if I mean? you're going to throw a rat, it's got to be a natural color. I you think know? so. Well, yeah. I think you and I had this conversation 20 years ago about I only fish natural colors. I'm just not. To me, this is going way out on a limb. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm boring. So, but, uh, you know, just. But some of the guys that come out with these wild things, and then I, I found out that a segmented tail does not outswim regular rubber tail. A, um, a piece of rope swims pretty good, but then you get your hook caught in it and you can't get it out. Ah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And typically when I'm fishing, it's got to be right now because the mosquitoes are biting more than the bass. So I can't have any <laughs> screw-ups. <laughs> I literally jump in the truck and drive to the next spot. <laughs> but, uh, you make a great point. So, so the best tails are like that old cream scoundrel or like a, a, a zoom trick worm or something like that. Those are the best tails in your experience. Um, they were in the beginning because I didn't pour worms and I, you know, Terry's friend, Scott Whitmer did. And I, I poured some worms, but I like to have my, uh, fans for when I'm pouring, if I try to pour worms, they, uh, they go right up the fan. Um, I can't pour small stuff like that the way that I pour my colors. But but I have worms made now, or I should say tails. Gotcha. And then, but I actually make the tail in a, in a long tubular, fill it up, and then pull the tail out. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but I don't sell them that fast. Um, I, I've kind of well, – You, that, you I, will after this appearance, my friend. Well, <laughs> well when they I, – I hope. I hope you will. Oh, I, I'm – I'm in the middle of a transition. I just moved and I've moved my shop. I first remember a couple months ago, I had to remodel uh, the garage. Now I'm moving in and should be up and running in a couple of days. But, uh, but basically Fantastic. all the different tails, whether it's a short one, long one, you know, all everybody's rack gets bit, but there is a couple still out there using the cream worm. And I, <laughs> and I almost, you know, one of them's pretty popular in San Diego and it's, I'd sure like to tag the guy, but uh, it just, um, they can't even think to make their own worm, let's just say. You yeah. know what I mean? And, uh, and the baits are four times as much as mine. We talked about this last time. It's just, uh, it's a different world. You know, I, you know, I've just heard recently a lot of the big, we talked about the drops. It's not, a lot of the drops are starting to slow down. Is and, that right? You know, you know, you raise the gas up to, well, in California, raise it up to six bucks, it's going to hurt lure sales. <laughs> yeah. You know, in Florida, what is it in Florida? Two fifty. Oh so, no, it's it's uh it's three fifty, three sixty right now. Oh, it's got to be killing you, man. The so, tennis, Tennessee diesel's about three twenty a gallon, and uh, yeah. regular yeah. unleaded's about two eighty. Yeah. You know, and that so. affects, of course, the guys going to the lake too. Oh hell yeah! So for me, once again, Isabella is about two and a half hours. That's the closest trophy lake, and uh, then the other one would be Silverwood, would be about four hours. So. Yeah, but you got the success there, there too. What's success that? has put out success has put out some pretty big fish. You know, uh, I got an eighteen out of there. It has in the past, and there was a I think there was an eighteen and a and a high 18 out of Korea. Yeah. And um, so there was a couple guys that got some fish about three years ago. And as soon as I tagged them, they pulled their whole website. They, uh, Whoa. One guy kept showing pictures of uh, 
spots from uh, spotted bass and, and, and largemouth from success. But the other pictures, he got some some big. They got some big fish, you know, o over thirteen pounds and stuff. And and um, just by looking at the shoreline, I knew I knew it was Kauia, because Kauia is a water uh, control lake, and success is a water storage lake. And you can tell Kauia's got a stair step shoreline, so it's going up and down with the wind, and the wind's cutting. And then of course there's some distinctive rock piles and. Don't take too much on Google Earth to figure it out, because the one thing is they got to take a picture. You know, there was a guy that got a sixteen and a half in NorCal, and literally took his pictures in the Blue Room urinal. You know, but, <laughs> and nobody could figure out where he was fishing. You know, in the spring, he might have, you know, he might have cut off the bed, but he was pretty smart. He never told anybody where he was fishing. I've been and fishing in the outhouse. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Miata. Yeah, that's isn't that that's hilarious. crazy? You know what I mean? Oh, that's so hilarious. As opposed to blurring out the picture or whatever. But uh, well, well anyways, Jerry, just, all, go ahead. One thing, one thing your your rats all have in common, apart from the fact that they catch really big fish and they're beautifully designed, is they're all big baits. They're all heavy, big baits. Tell us what you fish them on. What what's your your rod, your reel, you don't have to mention brands, of course, but at least if you, if you want to mention brands, by all means do that. But sure. at least give us kind of the, the properties, the lengths, the actions, and the line, rod reel line, if you would. So typically I like I like a, a small smaller swim bait rod, but I like them to be about, you know, close to eight feet. And uh, so the last few years I've been fishing a bait, a rod called a big bait rod. And uh, the guy that makes them, they're uh, – He's got these special guides, and I, I saw that Loomis had something similar, but they look like old fly fishing guides, uh, like, like a little guys. wire loop, right? Yeah. And uh, but the point is, the way that the loops are, that the braid comes off. I, I like braid rat fishing all the time. And uh, the way the the way that the the loops of your line come off, you don't get snagged, or you know, you're not hook constantly hooking your rod and you know how braid one little jerk and you know, it can wrap it around yeah. and it'll clean up literally 90 percent of that these rods and um so wow. I, I like those a lot and then i have but typically I, I fish lighter rods than most people whether it's bass or stripers whatever i like them i like a little more bend in the rod let the fish bend it you know what i mean there's i don't need a broom handle to cast far most of my rat casts are underhand i also make bombing casts with the same rods i'll use uh you know you know mono once in a while but the braid just saves you from so much brush or whatever sometimes you can pull a floating tree in and that's like but it works for me and then of course the bass you know you can just tank them right up the bank wherever you're at or into the boat or, or whatever but what, what do you like for a uh, size on your braid you like 50 65 um, i like about i like like 40 um i don't you know, the heavier one starts to get a little stiffer. You know what I mean? I mean, if you know you're going to get a big one, you know, it, I can't say that you know anymore. But let's just say 10 years ago, sometimes I'd go, and I know I'm going to get one in the night's time. You know what I mean? I might go a little bigger back then. But uh, but still, you're, you still, even with 50 or 60, you might rip those hooks out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you got to give them a little bit. Does and, uh, the rat behave differently on 65 than it does on yeah, 30 Yeah, I don't or 40? think it wiggles as much. Um, you know, and then, of course, uh, there's – but with a bigger lure, you might want heavier line, um, you know, so that the lure fights the line, let's say, sometimes. But but it's kind of a finesse. You want that wiggle, and you want it to be – remember, a lot of times you're fishing in the dark. You just want to have the confidence that that lure's out there doing what it's supposed to do. And then for uh, for reels, I like, um, you know, obviously a slow reel. You know what I mean? Like, you know, five to one. I use the, um, like, you know, the millionaires. I'm sorry, the zillion. <laughs> the zillion. He's oh, using 1973 dials. Oh, my God. A dial a millionaire 3H. And, and I like them, too. 81. So, and I've got it. And, and like you say, if I'm going to use 50 or 60, I've got... I've got the eight foot 
heavy rod with uh you know i still use um I, i'll use a regular rod plus the one with these guides that i was telling you about the big bait guide but yeah on that one um you know i'm gonna throw a bigger bait but i got i got the big revo on there that it's the no mercy i'm winning or you're winning you know what i mean so you just it's gonna crank them in because a rat caught fish is a pretty exciting fish you know oh I mean? yeah it's just like any other top water and um you know it's just uh you know i wanted to mention too like so like let's just say some of these rats i have a, a soft bait version of the same thing and uh, they won't really? swim as as uh, agitated as a uh, as the hard bait, but they do swim. And rats are quiet for the most part; they're not yeah. making a bunch of noise. But, but what I've noticed is um, with the soft rats is you're not going to get that many. You, they grab it, and you can't set the hook because their teeth grab that rubber, and it's hard to move the hook on some of them. You know, and if they grab it really hard, whereas I think that they slip, you know, I think that their teeth slide from the hard bait to the hook because of the pull down. And it's always right. a pull down. You know what I mean? And uh, so that's why I've stayed away from the soft rep. It's just, uh, they, they work, they look pretty good, but I think that the hard one's better. And then then we're talking about size again. I think I have a little, little tiny one I had made in China. And, uh, you know, this is a 10-year-old. Rat Betty. Down there. Yeah, it's a rat. Remember Michael Jackson's rat? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and he, it was named Ben. Remember, and then they were four <laughs> feet long or whatever. But uh, this thing, this will catch trout. But the point is, you can still catch a 10-pounder on this on this size. And it's, it's only two inches. And, uh, and it basically kind of looks like the others, but... But what I've come to find out is when when they oh you got a little one when they uh yeah you sent this I to believe me. It's, that a, they, it's your it mouse I think you call it the mouse yeah yeah so well I've kind of switched to rat uh, just saying rat all the time because because mm -hmm. the not to, to confuse and there was another guy that duplicated my rat and he called it a mouse. Right. And, you know, but basically I had a friend buy one and I duplicated it right back and sold it for half the price. And um, <laughs> he went out of business. But, uh, but basically what I've come to find out is the bigger rat is always better. You'll get you might get more bites on the little one, but you will catch way more fish on the bigger rat because I believe it's like the big guy in jail. You got to take him out and um, you got to hit him hard the first time and even the little one. And it's just better yep. because with the smaller rats, lose a lot of fish. They just don't hit them hard. Or they're playing with it like a killer whale, if you will, with the seal. Yep. With the seal. They, they want to slap it around. They know it's not going to get away. You know, it's, you know, it's funny. I caught a big brown trout about 40 years ago with a big rat in it. But I've never caught a big brown trout, or at least one over five pounds, on, on a rat. So... Which is and crazy. I, I, I live in the area, you know. But I caught a bunch of trout in Idaho that had mice in them, and I'm talking right. 15, 16 inch trout that had you know mice in them that were sure. the size of this, the size of that thing. But my reputation is that I is that I fish with live mice, little white mice, is what they always said. And as a matter of fact, one time I heard Fishing Game said that I. I received an order in the mail, and I went to pick them up, and uh, they were on to me, and that I pulled over and and let the white mice go, and that they didn't what? get me. They didn't. They didn't get me for fishing with them. They got me for releasing a non spade a non-native species into the environment. These are the rumors or whatever. You know what I mean? And they oh don't my realize. God. They have no idea how many fish I've caught on a rat. You know, a, you know, fake rat. And, right. Um, like I said, I just always remember we talked. I always liked those flies, but they didn't wiggle or anything. And um, so I don't even know if I made the first rats. I know I have the only rat patent. Um, but when it, when I uh, first did it, you know, I I didn't I didn't look at old magazines and stuff. And and I have a friend that's brought several lures to my attention over the years. And I tell him I don't want to know about them. 
I want to think that I made it. Um, well, you know, Hedden, so Hedden, Hedden back in the 30s and 40s came out with their Hedden Meadow Mouse. Sure, sure. And, and you know, I think, I don't think anybody can. Can do you recall of anyone other than Hedden that made something like that? I know of a ton of, what, what would I call them? I would call them like uh, folk art style mice and rats. Like uh, King Creek Chub had the dingbat, you know, with the... Yeah. I don't think that's but a head, rat. Hedden's Meadow Mouse with, what, a little leather tail kind of thing going yeah, on. Didn't yeah, didn't it have was... a face on it, like a jitterbug? No, it had a, it had a lip. It actually had a small diving okay. lip. Okay. And it was a wake it was a wake bait style diving lip. It it wasn't sure. a diving diving lip. Yeah, it just you know, there's lots of things that have been thought of, just like you talked about the umbrella rig, you know, the guy I knew nothing out. about the guy in Alabama and I'm sure he didn't know nothing about me, but they were out there. You know, it's just uh, Oh yeah, they've been out there for striper yeah. fishermen. Yeah, people, and, yeah. Oh yes, yeah, it's, it's trolling fishermen. equipment. The the umbrella rig had been around since at least the sixties. Uh, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. Before, yeah. But what before. what yeah. Jerry had in the works with his version and Andy Poss in Alabama was was significantly different. Um, well, yeah, you couldn't it, cast Jerry's. <laughs> well, um, I have. I got. Yeah. <laughs> I've had double hookups. You know what I mean? But uh, what are you doing no, over there, Batista? Are you undressing? What the hell, hey, man? Leave me, leave me alone. I, let me get comfortable here. I know, I know a guide out here that caught, that found one of mine, and uh, and tried to cast it. And didn't open the bail. <laughs> and uh, it was Troy, heard, wasn't it? Huh? Wasn't it Troy? No, it was. Uh, found it at Paris, right? Chair, chair potty. He's in NorCal. Oh. So I heard okay. he, he cast it and he didn't open the bail. And it yanked his, you know, seven hundred dollar rig out of his hands. <laughs> and, he, and he tried to swim after it, you know. You know, there yeah. was a day, uh, the day I was arguing with Cher, and I tied on five generic trout, right? You know, the full blown hard baits, and uh, <laughs> and I threw it over the side of the boat. You know, I never even tied it on my line. So that was oh, oh. right to the bottom. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> so, uh, oh it's a mistake we all know, make, I, but we usually don't make it with a with hundred dollar baits. Well, and five, uh, there was and a five guy, of them. Well, it, oh, it was, made a difference. But there was a guy that found one of mine, and uh, and you know, you, you know, you can only have hooks on three. So, well, very yeah, very state to state, sure. In California, yeah. So you got to have a couple dummies, and getting bit on the dummy hurts. You know what I mean? So I found, you know, like I said, certain patterns where they didn't bite those. But but one guy, uh, a guy that was pretty big at Casitas, and he won a lot of tournaments at the Colorado River. And uh, so he tells me, he goes, yeah, man, I got one of your rigs hanging in my garage. And I go, really? You know, and he goes, he goes, yeah, I got it all up on the wall. And I go, What's it like having an atomic bomb in your garage? And you go, I don't know. <laughs> What's it like having an atomic bomb in your garage? And you go, I don't know. Okay. Never thought to put it on. And he's uh, he won a lot of tournaments. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's me. That's just kidding. That was what? it was uh, insane fish. You know, I will say insane again. Uh, fishing with Jerry back in those days because, like you said, you got three hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollars with the baits on uh, at any one time, and just getting them unhung because we'd we'd hang up. I mean, you're fishing close to the bottom. And, well, my my uh, my bucket list includes a, a, a trip with Jerry Rago where we throw rats, and I watch the master at work. Jerry, I, I know folks want to know this. I want to know this. What's your biggest bass on a rat? Um, 14 pounds. Oof. Oh, and 15. what's the big, 15. What's the biggest that you know of on one of your rats? Um, 16. 16? Yeah. Enormously impressive. The guy was reading the paper. Yeah, he was, he was drifting around with the rat, dead sticking it, reading the paper. And, uh, you know, it was the middle of the day, he's just bored. 
And he told me he heard a splash. And I'm like, huh, I wonder what that was. You know what I mean? And then realized, oh my God, it's on my line. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of line now. And he, he, was, he had a trolling motor, but he wasn't really hitting it. He was just drifting around. And it sucked the rat through its gills and was hooked right in here. It wow. Went all the way to, that's how hard it sucked it in. And uh, that's that's the biggest I've heard of. You know, maybe maybe another one, but I can't remember the details or how big. But, uh, I certainly wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't bigger than that. Uh, take us through, like your alpha rat or something like that, take us through kind of your default retrieve with, with one of your waking style rats. Well, this is, so a lot of them, especially these, uh, these one piece ones, whatever one piece, they'll actually walk the dog, but does it get you more fish? No, I, I wouldn't say it does. You know what I mean? You might get a couple. And then of course there's the waking, the one that does walk the dog. And then it's, right. it's, uh, has more turn than, than a spook, let's say, and not as much as say a lunker bunker. Okay. But, but basically those are when they're biting, really biting. But the typical they're more aggressive. Bite, yeah. But typical rat bite is um, just throw it out and reel it in. I'm telling you, you don't need to twitch it. You don't need to pause it. You can pause it. You know, sometimes I'll throw it out and just let it sit there for a minute and then, and they'll grab it just sitting there. No twitch, no nothing. But generally just a slow retrieve waking. It's, it's not rocket science in any way. And I'm surprised. Actually, I believe, like, let's just say the Bassmasters or Major League, they don't fish them as much because they don't have time. And um, you'll see them, you know, skip the frog into the branches and bang, 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 bang. You know what I mean? It's it just not. But I believe if somebody took the time, they're going to win, you know, eventually. They don't have to win every tournament. But, you know, we don't see it. Is there a win like that with a, with a rat? Was there ever a win with the Vision 110? Division one ten caught thousands of fish. Yeah, but was there a win? You know, you know what I mean. It's just you know going we're pretty into sure. Th we're pretty sure there were lots of wins. It's just that the bait was yeah. never mentioned. Did it get out there? Oh. That's, that's the problem. You oh. know, you can make right. you make some of the the, bet, the finest baits in the world, but uh, a guy gets it and he wants to keep it all to himself. And what what a yeah, shame that a, is. Yeah, I sent a a new hitch bait to Clear Lake. And the store owner, I'm pretty sure he kept them all for himself. You know, he didn't even try to sell them. But I'm still going to try to come out with it. You know, they, something they haven't seen, right? It's always like that. You know, like, let's just say like that clash. Um, I've never even seen one in the water, but I know everybody wants to fish it. And I, and I actually met the guy and did an interview with him. Um, but uh, I can't fish with that guy's lure. You know, I just can't. So, like Terry, you know, you know the Southern California scene. What if I fished the Huddleston? Would I have caught more? You know, what I mean, you got to think about it. I, I never I, fished. Them. I mean, you that's the I mean? thing about a that's the thing about a bait maker is a bait maker designs a true bait maker designs a bait to do something in a certain situation, and there's nobody other than the bait maker that knows their baits better than them. And so, I mean, it would be foolish for you to pick up someone's bait. Jerry, yeah, uh, no, rather than yours. And then even, even if I was to copy someone else's bait, you know, I can't do it. You know, yeah. it's just uh, there was a, a big glide shad that I just love, but I can't do it. And uh, but there's too many glide shads already. You know, I'm not going to yeah. spend the time and investment to sell a few here and there. Like you said, that you know, I'm probably going to get hit for rats after this show. And I'm to tell you the truth, I'm not ready, but but I will be because I'm actually ramping up again right now. Like, let's cool. just say, doing what I haven't done for about six years. You know, every once in a while you get a, you know, a second, third, fourth wind or, you know, whatever. So just yeah. uh, like this one's, uh, I call this one the mink. <laughs> oh my but gosh! Look at that! Damn, it's, it's, the folks it's who can't big. see it, it's it, it's. it's uh, it swims disgusting. You know what I mean? It's all over, but... It looks like we're, something we're, that you'd find at an adult 
uh, toy store. Yeah, so <laughs> yikes, <laughs> yikes, <laughs> Batisti. PG, please, PG. For the folks who are listening and can't see it, this thing looks like you probably have to register it as a boat. It's that big. <laughs> it's big. It's got to have CF numbers on it, right, Jay? Yeah. <laughs> And exactly. you know what the problem is? A little one will attack it, too. Yeah, that's the amazing oh, yeah. thing is, is these... Yeah, these maybe my brother was fishing in Sacramento and he those those uh, nutrias and stuff that would follow his rat in. You know, you know I've been... Uh, uh, mud hens, they hate the rat. They just swim that, over and start pecking at them. That was one of the things I was wanting to ask you, too, is how often are your baits attacked by birds? Um, Not as much as you think. Um... Obviously, the ospreys, I've had them dive on big baits. I've had them dive on Rapalas, and I'm, I'm watching. But I don't want to deal with one, so I try to rip no. it away from them. You know, but, uh, but they get one, everyone. I, did, I had uh, Matsumoto, the fish arrow guy from Japan, and we went around a point, and I was daydreaming, and, and uh, we had one grab it, uh, grab a swim bait. And, uh, you know, luckily it we, we didn't hook it. And then another time at the Colorado River, I was using an inline soft bait. And so I hooked, I hooked a, a big striper, about 26, 27 pounds. And so the, the lures swam up or, or, you know, it slid up the line. Came about up the line, feet. sure. Yeah, now I got a bald eagle trying to take it from me. And, uh, <laughs> wow. And luckily there was no hook. And he, I bet that bald eagle is trying to figure out why he couldn't get that thing out of the water. You know, he's fighting me and the fish. You know, it's just uh, yep. that's amazing. I'm surprised yeah. you didn't you didn't slice your line. It sounds like you're doing a lot of your rat fishing at night or under extremely low light conditions. Is that when you you have the most success with that bait? Yeah, absolutely. And if and it can happen in the middle of the day, a lot of times. Yeah, like the 16 happen. pounder and the guy just uh, drifting. But, While but reading the paper, reason, who the hell totally brings a newspaper in the boat with them? Yeah, yeah. Well, he was. He would apparently guys who catch sixteen pounders, but I'm sorry, Jerry, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he would stay at the lake for a month in his in his motor home and just yeah. no hurry. Hey you folks, next I mean? episode of the Big Bass Podcast, guys who read newspapers and catch lunkers. Yeah, we well, I'll tell us. you what, one day um they were filming for a show. It was a different bait, some other bait guys. And uh they got to fish behind the buoy line at Casitas. They paid a bunch of money and uh so I just happened to show up, and uh, so I wasn't I wasn't getting bit, but I noticed, you know, the water. It was that year, Terry, that the water was really hot. It's when that Matt Newman guy had a giant limit, and uh, that year. Yeah, yeah. But basically, yeah, that was like um, we started fishing with the. Uh, so I was fishing with the rat to to bring these bass were coming out of the tulies. So the tulies that year. It was, it was the, the water was so high, there's eight feet of water in front of the tulies. So there was almost wow. like no shoreline. But the bass were in those tulies, and they were coming out chasing the rat. And on the way back, man, I was coming through with the umbrella rig, just killing them. But I did notice that there was a whole bunch of, like, nine-inch bass. And I put on, like, a, you know, bass-colored swim baits, which actually were trout. But I had some that looked, you know, more like a bass. So, uh but that was a special day. I think I had four four double digits that day. Oh and, my but what's God. cool is those other guys never got one, and there was three boats of people. They never got a double digit fishing in the closed area, and I got four. And actually, I can only count three because when I opened the live well, literally an eleven pounder went airborne into the lake. So it's really, <laughs> a big one. and then uh, one time I got I had three just bang 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 in a a lady comes by in a kayak. And she goes, "I just thought I'd let you know there's no fish in this lake." And I go, "Really?" And I and I just I just finished taking pictures. And I go, "Nope, now there's three of them." You know. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Good clapping. for you. Yeah, well, I, I, cool. I love it when people so, say stupid stuff. Yeah, there's oh, a man. lot of people that live in Ohio that have more money than sense. So. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Jerry, sure, you talked about the low light conditions are best for the rat. Uh, roughly, what kind of light conditions do you think are best? I mean, um, how, how close to dark or how how long after the sun comes up before you put it down, typically, that kind of thing? Right until you can't see the tie a knot on, basically. 
I've wow. caught plenty, plenty in the dark at night, you know. And uh, but before dark, it's like it's like the the movie's ending and the curtains are closing, and they just gotta get, they just gotta jump on it. And uh, it's just uh, and once again, does color matter as much? No, like you know, I have brown. Um, like I said, a lot of people like the black, but I just like the natural color. But the bone has been a surprise. You know, just something about their color and their cones of their eyes. They're seeing it really good. And then, but not that many fish after dark on the bone. Let's just say I went at 11 o'clock at night. Well, I mean, there's, there's white rats, so the bone shouldn't be a surprise to you. Right, right, but the white rats are mostly a lab rat, let's say. Yeah, they're, right? unless they escape from the lab where, where Terry was probably created. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you know, but I don't see a... No, I'm, I I'm, I'm not, not, not that big fan All right, of so I got, I got your next bait for you. You got to do a possum. <laughs> um... <laughs> It's something that's... Dead. So, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a possum in the water. I've never seen you, a possum you know, in the water. A, I made a really nice guy that's a pro out here. He's, he's on the major league. He's, you can think of one of the nicest guys there is, right, from California. And I made him a couple of tools that rolled over on their side. And, you know, and, but as soon as you started reeling, they started, they would write themselves and swim them. And uh, and he, I made him. They were really something. And uh, and the next week he filmed a TV show, with Art Barry and his rap. Okay, oh that gosh. really took me off. But and then uh, then I also heard the same guy, won it at, at Havasu, and uh, and uh, so I ran into him at the show and said, hey, just let me know if you need some more. Same guy, right? He's a really nice guy, but they're not going to tell, right? And we're, you know, we're literally in the bathroom at the Angler's Marine. And he goes, no, man. I go, hey, man, the back seater told me you didn't take it off for three days. And he just looked at me and said he would not admit it. You know, so you don't know, right? Yeah. And uh, just uh, hard to say. But I do think that the pros need to fish them a little bit more, but they are a slow bait. But so is any wake bait. You know, just uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah you know, when was the last time you heard of a, a a tournament getting one on a wake bait? It's been a long I, I time. I think probably, uh, especially if you're talking about a, a larger rat, something that the whole thing measures eight nine inches or more. I think uh, probably most pros launch and they do not even have it in their boat. I, um, you mentioned something earlier that I wanted to get into, Jerry. You talked about. Most of your strikes coming in the first two feet of the retrieve or the last two feet of the retrieve. Can you talk a little bit more about that? I mean, uh, how close are you trying to put those these baits to the toolies or or whatever cover you're fishing? Yeah, and, as and close as possible. Oh, oh, as close. Do possible, you start the retrieve immediately? Do you let the ripples die? What do you like to do? Now, usually, start the retrieve immediately because a uh, lot of bites before you even turn the handle. Um, I had a day a couple months ago where i believe i caught eight on the fly i'm not kidding you they were, <laughs> eight on the fly they, i know what you mean were, you, the, ba the bass almost it's like they see it coming through the air and hit it i as saw it their the lips water. grab it right out of the air beef the mu millisecond before it touched the water amazing you know, wow. that that day really did blow me away you know i need to go back and look at video because i videoed that day and i might have some of those you know, that would be some amazing footage and then of course well, it's a cell phone pinned on my chest, but but basically, uh, you know, when you're about to pull it out of the water, you know, a yeah. lot of them come up at that, you know. And then, uh, yeah. um, I mentioned earlier, um, I've fished about, I'm going to say, 95% this year uh, with the rat subsurface. Just I just got into it, and I've had a just a lot of bites, but it, due to our water situation, I'm. And um, but uh, but mostly throw it out, just reel it in. It's it's not any kind of rocket science. And like I said, that little tiny rat I showed you, 
Um, I've caught I caught one ten pounder on that. Um, funny thing about that was I tested. This is no kidding. I tested a hundred and twenty rats that day that went to Japan. You know, all all made out of resin, and wow. I, which means I had to put the hooks on all of them. And I, I always make sure that the wake is good, and that it's tuned once you crank it under the surface, even though it's probably not going to happen. That it's swimming perfectly straight. I'm going to tune it like a like a crankbait, right? But after all that testing, it was a, it was about four or five years ago. But there was an eclipse at eleven o'clock in the morning, and it was a real big deal uh, worldwide. And I got I got this ten pounder on that little tiny one, right in the middle of that eclipse. It was and it was eleven o'clock in the morning. It just so I don't know. <laughs> wow, it's, amazing. Uh, that- do you when you're when you're tying the rat on? Do you tie directly to the to the eye, or do you use a, a snap or a, a, I, a split ring? I like a snap. I don't like rings at all. Just more hardware. But I like the snap. Um, my brother would tell you that you could take a picture with another lure, right? But no, it's <laughs> because I might switch rats or baits. I, I might get a follow. And switch that fast. Plus, I'm a lure maker, and every time I go is a test. So you know it's not I mean? about it's not about the snap improving the freedom of movement. It's just about ease of changing baits. Um, I like the way they wiggle better. I don't like tying okay. direct. Um, the only thing I tie direct is a uh, glide bait. Everything else gotcha. gets a snap. I'm a big snap fan. Gotcha. And, uh, just, uh, and then you know, once in a while, you bend them up. And you got to change them. You know, I've I've wore them out before. You know, but, uh, yeah. What, what snaps using, are you using? Exactly. Great. I want to um, know that one for well, sure. Well, you know, Duo Lock is a. Uh, it took me a long time to figure out that it was a style, not a brand. Uh-huh. And um, sometimes I buy the same one, and I don't know the brand. Let's just say it's uh, Lure Parts Online, and sometimes I get the one, and when the the snaps that, to me, that work the best, you know, they're kind of figure eight shape, but the ones that have a crooked crossbar are no good. The ones ah. that have a straight crossbar, and I can't seem to get the same thing twice. You know, and then I, I've tried some of uh, the Amazon Chinese ones and just can't trust well, what them. about like his yeah. owner makes some really good well, uh, they, yeah snaps. there's the owner one and then there's the egg one um mm-hmm. you're tried working those things when you're getting bit by mosquitoes or or it's really cold and you gotta take your gloves off they're a pain yeah, in the butt. yeah and they're yeah. really hard to get through like you know i like this one lip you know this you know the line tie on the crankbait right it's a pain in the butt yeah. let me get it in you can see the loop there. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's that's a pain to get to through there sometimes. And then, of course, this one, that nose tie is really easy. You know, but sometimes it's kind of a pain in the butt. And, and let's just say with, like, a walking bait, like the walking rat, and uh, and let's just say, like, a, any walking top water, like Lunka Punker or whatever, I've even put that, like, a figure eight length that actually pulls over to the side. And that will help the walking, but they get jammed. You know that's that's the only problem. You got something going really good, and all of a sudden it locks up. And, you know, right. if that was your main cast into the tree where you saw the big one the day before, and now you, you know you're just screwed it up. So, right. what's yeah. the biggest mistake you think uh, guys who are not that adept or experienced with rats? What's the biggest mistake they make? Um, thinking that they got to have two hooks. You know, you know when you need them. You know what I mean. And uh, I would say trying to go small. You know, but the other thing would be putting it down too soon. You know, just uh, so I literally don't take the rat off all summer. I, I you gotta you gotta imagine how many baits I have, and they go on another rod. You know what I mean? So it's just uh, there's always got to throw it through there. You know, sometimes I. Uh, Fish, you know, let's just say I fish a hole and I'll make, let's say, 12 casts. I'm covering, I'm banging the bottom or I'll wake it or whatever, and uh, it'll be the rat and nothing, and then I'll catch it on something else. And then, or vice versa, I'll fish the other bait first, and then the rat pulls them out. And it's more usually the rat pulls them out. I, I, I just, 
you could leave a rat on forever. You know what I mean? Or you could leave a you could leave an AC plug on forever, and you're gonna get bit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just uh, or or a bait that I have that might be similar. You know, part of it is that just you know believing in the bait. Um, I just had a little thing because of meeting the DRT guy. I'm hearing that a lot of guys want my generic shot in Japan, but nobody told me that personally. You know what I mean? I didn't have, so I might make a little run of them, but, uh, but it's hard to, you know, the baits from a long time ago. So how would you, know, you get the bait. tails? Cause you were using a worm king on those, right? Oh, I make or no? You were using a you were using a sluggo or a finesse fish, a Lunker City finesse, yeah, finesse fish. fish. But I started making them. Remember, we know Zank. Zank made me a more oh, yeah. twenty years ago. And, um, right. And then, but I have all different sizes of those now. I've made. Yeah, you I've made make generic own. trout. I want one. All <laughs> right, <laughs> your old buddy Terry. You know, because... everybody wants they want an original one and they want the original paint job. But I'd like to put. It didn't have scale. It had gills. But mm -hmm. remember, I, I'm a builder, not a carver. But I know how to put nice scales. I know how to do it now. Yeah. But, uh, but I'd like to dress it up a little bit. And um, But it's not always what Jerry likes, right? Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I say you need to just, you know, you need you don't need to fish my bait all the time, but you should have one. You know what I mean? Um, well, what I mean I like is that. It, you know, it's like, um, you know, I use these low down rods. Um, the guy made the actions that I wanted. I tried not to use his rods because we're friends. And um, every time you have a friend, you end up not being friends. You know what I mean? But yeah. uh, but the other thing is, you know, everything's got a, you know, a different way. But sometimes I say like, like this guy doesn't like, the braid guys. A lot of guys say braids over. I say it's not. You know, and then uh, you know you get a lot of response from the braid, but but then these other guides that are made for the braid to slip off. I say if you don't have that rod, you are cheating yourself. You don't need ten of them. You just need one. You know, what I mean, right. it's just but but there's products out there, whether it's mine or somebody else. You you got to try. You know, like. For me, I don't have that option because I made my baits and, you know, I had, you know, my reputation, you know, for what I fish with. You know, uh, before a guy blew up on me because um, I caught a couple on crawdads with a buddy. You know what? I always said I caught them on crawdads. You know what I mean? But, and once again, when I mentioned about the Huddleston or whatever, you know, we all know the Huddleston's great bait, but I never got to fish it. But would I have caught more? I don't know. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Probably not. Stuff, I mean, you know, but I might have been more timid to, you know, try to protect the other bait, right? Instead of being yeah. reckless. And I do believe you got to be reckless. So, you know, if there's a rock, I'm going to hit it. I don't care if it's 40 feet deep. I got to hit that rock. So, right. Uh, anyway. But, uh, what, Jerry, one of the, one of the great uh, I've had an opportunity through my career to interview a lot of really impressive anglers and and oh, designers bet. and stuff like that. And uh, but I'll tell you what, you're you're right up there. And and one of the th I'll never forget a retrieve you told me about 10, 12 years ago with the rat. We were doing a story for Bass Times about the rat, and um, you talked about attaching a weight by another line. With a, with a couple of feet of leader between the rat and the weight and and throwing it so that the weight winds up like in the weeds or the toolies. Sure, right. Tell us about that retrieve because that retrieve blew my mind. So my brother was at a lake and the dragonflies were landing like crazy. And he saw a lot of big fat. He, he wasn't experienced enough, but he's, it actually turned him on a, into a real bass fisherman. Because he saw him blowing up on dragonflies. So I told him, why don't you just take the rat? You know what I mean? And so the weight would be, uh, let's just say, three feet long, piece of two-pound test, and just uh, 
an egg sinker or a little bell sinker or whatever, let's say quarter ounce or half ounce, and you throw that into the toolies and you're on the other side of the little bay or you're in your boat, and, uh, and you're going to let that wrap blow over to the toolies and then reel it until it hangs up. And then just keep letting it go back in there. And it's kind of, if you had seen, maybe you saw a fish there, but you can only cast there so many times. And then, but now you're not casting. You know, I mean, you're just letting it float back over and reeling it back, float back over. And it doesn't have to be three feet, but, but if the fish blows up on it, because you're trying to stay in the same spot, but not yeah. cast it 20 times. And then, of course, if you get bit, you just set the hook and break the two pound test. And you lose the sinker, whatever. And I've also done that with the big tool and lost a really, really big one. And uh, the mistake I made that day was fluorocarbon. I, I, uh, I happened to see these six trout swim by, and I went, those look just like the tool. I wasn't even fishing the tool that day. And I went and got it out of the truck, and I grabbed the rod with fluorocarbon. And the problem was this, I'm going to say... 16 to 18 pounder. The only one I ever hooked like that. Oh, wow. And by the time I got the fluorocarbon out of the water, it was gone. And then plus it was a, it was a 13 inch tool. So that's a, a pound that's thrown around. And it was a big fish. Right. I, I, don't, I don't know, if, you know, Ken or if you've had a real big fish at the boat or whatever, but I like that. No, they're, they're a different animal and they're, it's cause he um, lives in Florida. I, I put one on a chain stringer one time, and it oh. broke the chain stringer. Well, yes. And uh, did like it was nothing. As a matter of fact, it, it skipped down the shoreline, and a guy told me, hey, buddy, no dogs on this lake. <laughs> and I said, uh, that was not a dog. That was a bass <laughs> taking its head for about 50 feet. You know what I mean? Just uh <laughs> And that right. one made me sick to my stomach. So you put a big fish on a chain stringer in Florida, you're going to get pulled around, but it's going to be by a big gator. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we don't I have want to a do buddy that. that was in Orlando said he could feel a feel him go under his boat. He's an aluminum boat, and he could feel the, the ridges on their back go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah. So uh, that's he's not. I could have been one. Of, I could have been one of those gator guys, but I have a full set of teeth, so that might have. Oh jeez! <laughs> if you have a full set of teeth and all your fingers, you're probably not a gator guy. What is it? Shoot him! Shoot him! So, shoot him! Uh, shoot him! Yeah. I, I think I would. Well, those like are Louisiana that. gator guys. Our, our Florida gator guys are, are highly sophisticated. Okay. Okay. <laughs> highly sophisticated. Oh, Most of them so, have PhDs. Yeah, I, I went to Georgia one time, but didn't make it to didn't make it to Florida. We got to get you to iCast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you right it's now, that bay right there is going to catch him in Florida. So. Bring it on the, down. The BV3D uh, caught one for uh, Shaw Grigsby one in Florida with the BV3D. So, so. anyway. Good, <laughs> Good old Shaw. Good man, Shaw Grigsby. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, really, really nice guy. Ah, super, super human being, superior person, a hundred percent amazing angler too. Terry, we got to have Jerry Rago back, but, uh, I think we've, we've done a pretty thorough run here on, on the rats. Definitely on the rat. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what I wanted to show. I desperately wanted a show on rats, Jerry. I, I really did because, um, a, nobody does it better than you. Uh, B, I think it's a really underappreciated big bass bait and style of fishing and yep. uh see uh, um i'm eating up with it and i need to do more rat fishing and i know you would inspire me to do so sir so i'm, yeah, just, I'm fired uh, up now that one i mailed you just fish it nobody has them yet it's not on the market yet um so uh I can't thank you enough for that thank you so much yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah it's just well i wanted to kind of uh the look and feel thing, like like a patent thing. So basically, yeah. you saw me holding up a, a several uh, one piece rats, and I hope with that one you'll be able to see the action that you can get without a joint. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, well, here we go again. Sometimes you get action with a joint, right? But uh, <laughs> hey, 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 guys, get it out of the unbelievable! I've got to police you people. You Californians are, are too much. Oh man. Yeah. Scott, yeah. The well, law-abiding Florida boy here has to take care of I, I live in a town that was famous. It's 8,000 people. It's a surrounding area, and it's, it was famous for how many sporting goods it had. There was like eight sporting goods on Main Street, and the big thing was the opening day and to go to all of them, and they'd have a radio uh, broadcast going on, and right. they'd walk through the sporting goods. And now there's more pot dispensaries than sporting goods. Oh my gosh! Hey, what was the the big one there on the corner, right in downtown Bishop? Was it uh, Browns or something? Or Brock's, 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 one exactly. Brock's, right in the corner. Yeah, that place was and, awesome. Uh, that was a good one. Yeah, had a giant bear in there, and then uh, yeah, but there was a let's call it Heron's, Culver's, Max is still there. It's pretty famous. Uh, there's a new one called uh, Reagan's. He's he's big. He's got a lot of a lot of different things, including rats that aren't mine. So, uh, I guess. How dare he? Oh, yeah. How dare, dare they do that? Yeah. <laughs> well, Jerry, I know there's a lot of outlets that carry your stuff. What's the best way for somebody to order uh, any Jerry Rago bait, but most particularly the rats? Um, <laughs> where do you want to send them? Probably the warehouse, but they've been waiting for a while. Everybody, I'm so far behind. The problem is I made too many baits, uh, too many uh, models, um, but they're coming soon. So don't give up on me. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm revamping. Um, I'm looking to get my, uh, you know, my fans for my paint booth and, and for my plastic cooking, you know, hooked yep. up tomorrow, hopefully. And uh, if I have to, I'll do it all myself, but I'm trying to go, you know, for, for production again. You know, I've just been limping along, making – Drops, if you will, but uh, but I have some other things in in a, you know that little tiny rat is sold by Thunderhawk. Um, it's worth the money. It's ten bucks. Um, Dang, you know, that's crank cheap. Base, and it cranks down. It burns. It, it's little. And uh, but uh, you know, I have a line of baits with them. But uh, once again, it's always tackle warehouse in San Diego. It's a East County bait and tackle. Has a pretty good selection, but actually, I've been dropping the ball, and you know, I still sell baits wherever I, you know, I generally sell to stores, but I'm about to switch to internet, and hopefully, I'll have about 30 different models. I got oh, shad, wow, a couple shad that'll soft shad. You'd like them? They're. Uh, I got your address now, so. Now it's going to be on you because you care know. packages from Jerry. They're always nice. well. You know, there's a lot of guys that have a. Um, I don't know if you ever heard of Loft or whatever, um, but you get it on your hands. A lot of guys and they just don't catch anything. But it's L O F T. Lack of <laughs> talent. So. Um, <laughs> so we can get you <laughs> oh my <laughs> wow <laughs> man well, it's like you dropped time. a hammer like, on that one you guys get me all fired up make me you make me want to go but i'm going so, I'm, I'm just letting it i need it to cool off about 15 degrees like i uh, remember terry i mentioned i was sick i'm pretty sure i got a uh, sunstroke on saturday oh no shit uh, yeah and it was it's different I go to the doctor tomorrow, get it all checked out. But uh, but there was something different, and it it floored me. So uh, you got to have those shirts on and that sunscreen and that hat. But but it's part and, of moving into my drink a ton shop. of water, especially when yeah, you get oh, to be our age, Jerry Rago. Being dehydrated yeah. is no joke. Oh, I was our drinking age. it, but all of a sudden I noticed while I was hot and sweaty, all of a sudden I felt like five degrees hotter. And sure enough, yep. I had a fever. So I think I'm okay now, though. So just, we're old. We got to watch it. Well, maybe Terry with that gangster hair. Yeah, but, uh, Terry's, Terry's anyway, part uh, Sasquatch anyway. Uh, yeah, he's a. Uh, Everywhere he goes, there are coincidental Spaniard Bigfoot sightings. Italian like me. So, anyways. So. All right, you guys. Sounds like. Uh, Sweet. It's fun. Let's. 
Let's do another one. Another yeah, subject. next time. Let's Absolutely. talk trolling next time. Absolutely. So. Or or bring Jerry on down the road with a live show or something like that where everybody That'd gets cool to play. Too. I think I'm, we can uh, do that. I'm coming to your house for iCast next year. Don't You're welcome here. You are welcome right. here, sir. Always. Cool. Always. Um, His wife will take yeah. extremely good care of you. My wife's a sweetheart. Yeah. She's what, are you, uh, what are you going back to Idaho for? I got to go for work. No, I got to go for work. Oh, I have, okay. Yeah, I'm still doing that stuff. And uh, so I got I got a class here all week. Because it pays um, too much. Huh? Can't quit because it pays too much. Golden handcuffs, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I'm I hoping really to retire in a couple of years. Either, but I'm, I'm too biased. <laughs> Ken's job doesn't make him rich at all. But I think what's yeah. going to make us all rich are our new loft T-shirts that say, uh, you know, okay. Rago Bates and the Big Bass Podcast cannot defeat loft. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's fantastic. I got yeah, another man. one. For next, I got another one, but we'll have to wait till next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, you're oh, awesome. Man. You're you're fantastic. Uh, we really appreciate you so much. Uh, we have so much fun talking with you, and, and I hope I hope the folks listening enjoy it uh, a tenth as much as we did because this is a joy. And, and yep. I hope they will check out your baits, either uh, once you start selling them online yourself or, or go through these other outlets to find you. Uh, you can find them, as Jerry said, on Tackle Warehouse. Yeah. He's not just got rats there. He's got all kinds of stuff there. And uh, you just want to go there and search Rago, R-A-G-O, and you will find uh, just a, a variety of baits. The the Thunderhawk yeah, stuff, the walk. It is rat. under Rago, too. It, does, it surprises me because sometimes I go look for them and I forget it's under my name and not the brand. Yeah, uh, hard baits, soft way. baits, yeah. a ton of stuff, a ton of great stuff. And a lot yeah. of stuff people haven't seen that I want them to see. I want, I want to get them out. Yep. And be patient. Go ahead and go ahead and place your orders and be patient. Uh, Jerry will get to you, and, sure. and there's there's nothing like it. Yep. yep. There's some guys out strong. there making baits, and you don't get them for a year, so they can wait a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you'll know that Jerry Rago himself has has touched that bait, made sure that bait's just right before it gets shipped out. So, who does that? You know, who does that? Well, I have to. I'm scared of somebody getting one that doesn't swim right or something. <laughs> yep. just, uh, you know i used to get about 10 a year back from tech warehouse and uh they always come back with no hooks for one thing but uh there's the guy to wear the bait out and then but basically when i started having them come directly to me it, the number really dropped you know what i mean just, uh, mm -hmm. they were taking advantage of tech warehouse or whatever and there's other stores i just need to ramp it up so all right, guys. All we right, want man. to keep you busy, brother. Thank you so right. much, Jerry. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yep. you can call Jerry or hey, Ken. You can call me anytime you want to. So, Always enjoy the, the visits. Definitely. All righty. So right, how guys. do I Thanks, click man. out of here? Oh, uh, you can hit just, uh, Nathan can take care of you. Yeah, Jerry, don't worry about it. To, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Let's try this up. It's time to slam the door on this fantastic episode of the Big Bass Podcast. If you didn't enjoy this one with Jerry Rago talking rat fishing, I don't know what we can do for you. But thank you for joining us. We know your time is valuable, and we really appreciate your spending some of it with us. If you enjoyed the show, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Send us a telegram. Write us a letter. Tell us what we can do better. Tell us what you might like to see in the future. If you really liked it, if you really like the show, please share it with your friends. Let them know about it. That would help us a lot. We're trying to increase the audience here. And if you're a Big Bass junkie, check out our website at thebigbasspodcast.com. That's where you're going to find our Big Bass Podcast Calculator, created by none other than Dr. Terry J. Battisti, uh, PhD. Uh, that is good for bass over 14 and a half pounds, so I hope you have several of those that you can enter the, the data and figure out exactly what it weighed without ever putting it on scales. We also have lists of state record largemouth, smallmouth, and spotted bass. If you'd like to contact us, and we'd love to hear from you, you can reach us via email at ken at thebigbasspodcast.com, terry at thebigbasspodcast.com, or nathan at thebigbasspodcast.com. Please join us again next week when we will bring you another story 
about another big bass that you will not and you cannot, no matter how hard you try, find anywhere else. And remember, size, size matters. matters. <laughs>